what's up everyone? Uh, I'm Dave from Kafaru, and today we're going to talk about doing your own DIY Euro mounts. Um, we're seeing a lot of success in the office, so I figured this is a good tech tip to talk about. Uh, we're midway through the season, 2021. Uh, we've got a few animals on the ground. I'm going to show everybody how to do some Euros. A um, couple of things, uh, Euro mounts, uh, you can do you know, you can boil them out, um, you can do cold water maceration. Cold water maceration, you don't want to like heat up the water, you're just basically like, you know, doing the same type of thing you would do with boiling except you're letting the water do the work. It takes a little bit of extra time, but you're not going to damage the skull. Uh, you can also take it to a shop and have them uh, they use the beetles and the beetles will actually eat all the flesh off. Um, that's probably the best way. Um, I'm going to go with the boiling route. Um, I'm actually not going to bring the water to a boil. We'll talk about that later. Um, things that you're going to need. So you're going to need a good sized pot. Um, you're going to want to be able to fit the head in. Uh, this is big enough for a deer, possibly a smaller elk. Uh, big bull, I'm not quite sure. We'll get there uh, when I get a bull on, bull on the ground in Colorado here. Um, I like to use some borax. This is going to be like a detergent. It's going to help get rid of some of the stink coming off the skull. Um, it's also going to help uh, get the meat and the tissue to come off as well. I like to use uh, Dawn dish soap. Uh, this, you know, I'll, I'll use quite a bit of that in the water, and that helps degrease and it also helps the meat to come off. Uh, when you're boiling or when you have hot water, you want a good set of tongs because you don't want to reach in there because the, the bone gets pretty hot. Um, you want a good knife. Here I have a couple of Taitos. Uh, we have just the Taito with a replaceable blade. Uh, be careful, these are sharp. Um, I'm going to use knives to scrape the flesh off um, and cut off any extra meat uh, that's in in there. Um, I also have the uh, Fanon 3.0. Uh, this is a great knife. I use this in the field. I'm going to use this to scrape the bone as we're getting closer to you know getting all the meat to come off. I want a long uh, a long standard screwdriver. Uh, the thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put this into the back of the skull and I'm going to basically just like soften up or break up the uh, brain tissue. Um, I want a good good size screwdriver for that. <clears throat> I have a couple of uh, detail tools. These are Huskies. I got these at Home Depot. Um, basically what, what I can do is with this I can go into some of the cracks and scrape off some of the some of the tissue that's really hard to get to without something like this. Um, so I have those. I also have a, a very long needle nose pliers. Uh, it's kind of nasty and beat up. I use this specifically for working on Euro mounts. Um, it's nice because I can get into the back of the skull and pull out the tissue that surrounds the brain. Um, I can also go into the nose cavity and, and pull out some of that cartilage with this. Um, you're not going to be able to do that with a shorter one. Um, some other things I'll use once I get to you know, boiling or also bleaching, I'm going to use like a nice nylon bristled brush. This is going to help me move some of that stuff off. Um, good set of gloves. Um, some of you may want to use it for when you're boiling. Um, I typically don't because it kind of gets in the way when I'm using a knife. I will use this when I'm bleaching though because the bleach will burn your hands, it'll burn your skin. Um, the thing that I'm going to use to boil I just picked up this really nice uh, single burner camp stove, uh, single burner stove. Um, this is big enough to get a pot on top of. I think it's right around uh, 150 bucks. Uh, you can get them at Sportsman's, get them online, whatever. Uh, I just picked one of these up. I'll probably use it in the office um, just so everybody can boil other skulls. Uh, you will need propane for this, um, so make sure you have a, a large propane tank. <clears throat> Okay, so once all the boiling's done and, and cleaned up, uh, you're going to change the water, you know, put more Dawn dish soap in there. Uh, you'll probably let it sit. Uh, this is going to let the skull degrease and it pulls some of the grease out of the, uh, the bone. Um, typically I'll do that for a few days, changing the water out every single day, and it's going to pull all that stuff out. Once that's all done, we move to the bleaching um, section of this. <coughs> uh, when I bleach, I'll, I'll typically let the skull dry probably overnight. Um, the next thing I'm going to need is going to be uh, a tray liner for basically like a roller tray for when you're painting. Uh, I'll put the skull in here and then I'll cover it with, with uh, the bleach. Um, this is going to help with cleanup. Again, you need the gloves. Definitely use the gloves. 
Um, I have just painting um, accessories. I've got paint brushes, cheap paint brushes. Don't use good ones. You're going to mess them up. So I have a few different sizes of those. Um, a smaller one for getting into some of those detail areas like inside by the, by the eye, um, inside that eye cavity. Uh, I can also um, mix up the bleach in here in these cups. Now the bleach uh, is, you know, you can get a lot of different types. The, the type that I actually like the most is a two-part bleach. Um, I get mine at TrueFit. It's a, it's a taxidermy supply uh, place in Utah. It's just outside Salt Lake. Uh, T-R-U-F-I-T-T. -T. It's a, they do like mannequin forms for uh, taxidermists. They do all sorts of stuff. Um, here I have a five pound bag of magnesium carbonate. Uh, this stuff is the powder. So um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put that in my cup and I'll usually, you know, just you're going to mix it by, the, by eye, you know, like you're going to see what, what it's going to take to make the paste. So I'll do a cup of this in here and then I'll go ahead and use a 30% uh, peroxide that I also get from them and then I'll pour that in. Uh, don't pour too much, just a little bit at a time. Mix it up with a stick and you basically want to make a, a liquidy paste. Um, you don't want it too liquid, liquidy because it's just going to fall off the skull. You don't want it too dry because then you're not going to be able to paint it on. Um, I ran out of the 30% peroxide from those guys. Um, I have Oz Isaac Aliman, a good friend of mine, is going to pick some up on his way into town. Um, but I, the other option is I have 40% uh, peroxide from a hair salon. This is Salon Care. If you or someone you know uh, works at a salon or a salon um, a place that uh, that supplies them with all their parts, you can also use this. This is basically the same thing. It's a 40% peroxide that you would use in a hair bleach. Okay, so those are the things you're going to need. Um, we're going to work on uh, Frank's deer that he shot. Um, we're going to bleach his skull. Uh, we already worked on the uh, velvet, so we're just going to jump in and start boiling it up. Okay. Yesterday, we walked through all of the different steps. Today, we're going to actually go and do the Euro mount for Frank's buck. Um, I actually had to start soaking it last night because it was smelling up the uh, studio for us, and it, it smelled really bad. I almost threw up. Um, so I, I stuck it in water already. Some of the things I missed showing you guys. Uh, Dawn dish soap, I just sprayed some in the water, kind of mixed it in, um, threw some borax in there along with it, um, and then threw the skull in. Now, some other things you want to think about are the depth of the water. We don't want the water to go over the end of the antlers, uh, over the base, um, especially with velvet. Uh, boiling water is going to soften that up and it's going to break or come off. Um, so I'm going to fine tune the depth of the water just so it doesn't go up to that. Now the whole skull is not going to fit in there perfectly. We'll figure that out later. Um, the other thing is uh, some guys will put like tin foil or shopping bags or something over the base of the antler. Um, Really, like a hard-horned animal, the, really the, the reason they're doing that is so it doesn't take off the uh, coloration uh, that the deer has put on or the elk has put on from rubbing antlers on trees and stuff. Um, and then the other reason is for when you're bleaching it so you don't take that color off as well. So we're going to fine-tune the, the depth, get this uh, started, and we're going to bring up the water to a simmer, and I'll come out and I'll check it you know, every 20 minutes and maybe scrape off some of the meat and then just stick it back in the water. This is where you lose a little bit of hair on your hands, so be careful. Ooh. And that was all of it. Doesn't smell very good. Okay.
right, we're just going to watch this so it doesn't uh, start boiling too much. If it boils too much, the the bone reaches too high of a temperature, it can potentially start to be a brittle, porous, crack, all those things. So we're just going to bring it to a simmer. We don't want the water rolling too much. Um, we're just going to get it warm, then the meat starts to just come off on its own and just scrape it off. Um, one of the biggest mistakes everybody makes is they just crank it up, boil the shit out of it, and the bone falls apart. Um, and it looks terrible, so keep it at a, a, a low simmer. This right here is a good temp. It's steaming. The water is a nice little little bit of a simmer, and it's not boiling. You can see the uh, meat's peeling back on its own. Let the water do the work. It doesn't taste as good as it smells. <laughs> okay, we should be checking this like every 20-30 minutes, just to make sure it's not boiling, but. It's looking pretty good, the, the meat's coming off on its own. I'm gonna let this drain for a second, I'll throw it on a table and start scraping, uh, just to help it along, and we'll throw it back in. Okay, first thing I wanna do, I should have done this probably before I threw it in, I'm gonna stick the screwdriver in the brain cavity, and that is right here. And you can see this brain. Um, before I cook it, I wanna break that stuff up so it comes out more easily. If you don't break it up before you start to simmer and boil, uh, it can turn into a, like a hardened ball, and it's gonna be hard as heck to get it out of there. You'll have to use a pressure washer inside the brain cavity, but basically I'll just stick this in, twist it, kind of break it up a little bit, take a little lobotomy on the deer, break that up. Um, it's ready to go back in. Uh, if you like brain boils, you could taste the uh, meat on there, the brains, but. Uh, the next step we're going to do is I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to start peeling some of this back. Some guys like to wear gloves during this section. I don't really care. Sure, Luke would love this. Getting it in there. All right, so I've gone around and, and peeled a bunch of stuff off. Used the uh, pliers to pull some meat off inside these eye sockets. Um, it's it's looking pretty good so far. Um, but I think I'll just like throw it back in the water and let it let it boil some more. Um, one of the things I want to do next is right around this nose, you've got some cartilage here. And I took I took this little tool and carefully went along the edge of the bone and just kind of pushed and freed up the tissue there. Uh, one thing I'll do next is I'm going to come in and right at the bottom of this uh, nose portion, it's notched going inward so I'm gonna make sure that this comes off a little bit I'm gonna go around this edge with a knife loosen that up and then I'm gonna notch this and you can kind of feel where the bone is so I'm gonna just peel some of this away start coming in to notch it and what I'm gonna do is once this is freed up the inside should start separating from the bone. And you want to be super careful because there's uh, little cones in there, like uh, small cartilage pieces that you want to make sure it's not damaged. Uh, that's another thing that a lot of people do when they do this, is they'll just go in, just stir it up with a screwdriver and bust everything. I like to keep all of that intact. Um, so once I get in here and clean up the bottom of the palate here, I can see there's a bone right there. And if you follow that bone to the end, there's gonna be a notch you can cut off and that'll free that stuff up. And then once we get that, I'm not gonna pull anything out quite yet. I'm gonna just throw it back in the water and let it sit. We, uh, 
We have some other things to do uh, today. I'll just throw this in there for a little bit and then I'll come back and check it every 30 minutes or so. What's up everyone, we're back. Um, I let this skull soak over the weekend, uh, sat in soapy water uh, for a couple of days, and I came out and just cleaned off a few more things. Um, it's looking pretty good. The trouble areas that I'm finding that you guys will also have are the back of the skull here. Um, it's really difficult to, to get the meat off of that. Um, sometimes up in here as well. Um, since we have not overboiled, we kept all of this detail in here in the sinus area. Uh, we have also kept most of the information inside of the sinus cavity. Um, be super careful with that. So today what I'm going to end up doing is uh, doing a little bit more cleanup. I am going to uh, get in here where there's a lot of meat right around the ear. This ear cavity, there's a little bone inside of it. so. I'm going to show you guys how to pop that out, how to clean it up, um, get some of this detail information around the teeth. Uh, there's a little bit of gum material in there. Um, and then we'll have to go and get a pressure washer to spray out the uh, brain cavity, get all of that out, um, clean off some of the difficult areas, and then I'll probably let it soak for a few more days just to pull the grease out. Use that Dawn Dish soap and the uh, borax to pull the grease out of it. Um, and hopefully uh, in about two days we can, we can bleach it up and I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, for this earpiece, we'll just find the opening. Okay, get the screwdriver or pliers in there. Break that bad boy out. And that right there is the piece inside of the ear. Uh, it is a little bone, it goes around the eardrum. By getting rid of that, we are now able to get in here and get this meat out and clean up all of this right here. So that's all cartilage. Be careful so you don't break this little bone. Be careful so you don't break these guys. They usually 
go in and lift up. Alright, we have cleaned off the back of the skull. We have popped out the ears out of the ear canal. Um, we have cleaned underneath here. We've gone around the gums, uh, taken the gums off. Teeth are good. Um, inside the nose is pretty good. Um, what I found is this velvet um, is not holding up very well. Uh, there are a few different reasons for that, one of which uh, the boiling doesn't help. Um, if you want to save the velvet, uh, you probably want to cut the antlers off and have them reattached later. Um, the other reason is uh, Frank shot this towards the end of season. It was ready to burst already. It was all, all dried out. Um, and it's in pretty rough shape. Um, we thought we'd try to salvage it, but it, it didn't work out. So um, Much easier with a hard-horned animal. Um, but yeah. Uh, the next step is we're just going to soak it for a few more days in that uh, water, warm water and dish soap. Um, and that should pull grease out. And most of the grease is going to come from the top of the forehead into the brain cavity. Uh, it'll pull that out. And once that's done, we'll let it dry for a little bit and um, do some bleaching. Um, you don't want to skip the brain cavity. Uh, we have a bunch of loose material in there. I might take that into the, into the sink. Don't tell the boss. Uh, get some water in there, get, get some of that brain out, um, and then um, maybe even pressure wash it with a pressure washer at the car wash. But next step, we'll throw it back in the bucket for a few more days, get the grease out, and then bleach it. And we're good to go to the next step. Okay, we're finally back. Um, had a couple of weeks off, I was up in Alaska uh, filming a hunt, so um, we had a chance to let the skulls soak and degrease. We just soaked it in warm water and uh, Dawn dish soap to pull the grease out of the bone and inside the skull cavity. Um, since then, Andres has started his antelope that he just recently shot in Colorado. Um, so after soaking, uh, one of the things that I would suggest that I wasn't able to do with uh, Frank's, Frank's buck is uh, sometimes when they dry, the, the plates in the skull separate and you can kind of see that going on here right in the, the nose area, it starts to pull away. Um, while it's wet and soaking, you can take some wire, just some thin flexible wire, wrap it around the nose, and then twist it up, and that will hold it tightly so when you take it out and let it dry, it won't s s split apart, separate, all of that. Um, I told Anders about that. He did his antelope and it's perfect. The plates are all nice and tight together. So since I wasn't able to do that with Frank's, um, after I bleach it, I'm going to soak it some more, get it wet, soften everything back up, and then I'm going to uh, wire it together to hold it tightly. And I may have to bleach it again one more time. Uh, so the next things we're going to need, um, definitely some gloves. Okay, you want some gloves. Uh, when you mix this bleach, you don't want to get it on your skin, in your eyes, on your clothes. It burns like hell, um, and it will bleach your skin. Um, I use these liners for uh, paint roller trays. Uh, just to keep it super clean and easy to clean up. Um, I'll use a, a mixing can for paint. A few different sizes of paintbrush to paint inside the uh, nasal cavity, inside the eye socket, all of that. Um, if you need something to mix it, maybe a stir stick or something. We have 40% peroxide from TrueFit. I will put a link in the description uh, to purchase this. Uh, there is a hazmat shipping um, charge, and it's going to double the, the price of this. Uh, the nice thing is you can get this uh, in, in person in Utah at the shop. It's, again, it's a taxidermy um, supply company. Um, you can get this in the gallon or, or larger containers. Um, uh, if you're doing multiple skulls, uh, this, will, this will do quite a few, um, especially deer and, and antelope size. We're also going to be doing our caribou here pretty soon. I'll, I'll take care of all of those. We'll also need 
the magnesium carbonate, which I get this from that taxidermy shop as well, True Fit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop this into the container. I'm gonna pour the peroxide in. Um, you won't see it mix, but once you start stirring it up, it becomes a paste. You want it to be a, a nice wet paste, but not runny, because we're gonna put it on the skulls. Another tip, uh, once you take these out of the water, let them dry overnight. Um, if the bone is wet, you put the bleach on, it's gonna slide right off. If you let it dry, and then you put the bleach on, it's actually gonna stay in place. Um, some guys will cover it with a, a shopping bag, plastic bag, to keep the bleach wet longer. Um, and you know, it might, it might be wet all day long, but I, I feel like if you set it out in the sun and it, and it dries, some of that oxygen in the, the sun helps actually bleach more quickly as it dries. Um, and then I'll go in and I'll brush it off and I'll just do the process one more time. So I'm gonna mix it up. We're gonna put in the magnesium carbonate Get that in there. It's a very fine powder. All right, we've got the magnesium in here. I'm gonna add the peroxide. I'm gonna do this slowly. Um, if you add too much, uh, it'll just get too wet and you're gonna to have to add a lot of uh, magnesium back in. Okay, so right now, it doesn't even look like I've added anything, but you can kind of shake it around and it kind of flows around so um, you can tell. I'm gonna slowly, gently mix this in. If you mix it too hard, like the powder will fly up. I don't have any wooden stir sticks, so I'm gonna use this aluminum one. Okay, it's a little too dry, so I'm gonna, you can see that it's not mixing very well, it's just clumping together. Remember, do just a little bit at a time when you're when you're adding the peroxide. It's hard to recover once it becomes too you know too much of a solution and too watery. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I'm just going to mix and get these lumps out. Okay, so that's a little bit runny. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more magnesium in there. And I'll just dust this and, and stir. It's kind of like adding flour back in when you're cooking, right? Add a little bit at a time. This is a lot closer. I'm just gonna do a tiny bit more and call it good. Okay, mix this up, final amount. Okay, looks good won't pour out very well. Good consistency, um, so it should sit on top of the skull and not slip off. So it's, it's like a good pancake consistency. All right, again, don't use a good brush, use a cheap one. Okay, so I've got my mix, I've got my brushes here. I'm going to start with the bottom and then flip it over so I can coat the top as well. Um, if you want the teeth to have that patina to them, that, uh, that kind of plaque buildup, that color, um, cover them with like Vaseline or something like that, um, or maybe chapstick. Uh, if you want to bleach the teeth, just coat them.
Make sure to kind of dab into all those nooks and crannies. Get a good coat on it. Uh, I'm going to take the smaller brush, go inside the nose, go inside this sinus cavity here, this little pocket. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I'll go inside this eye socket here. So this is what it looks like, pretty much uh, done being coated on that side. Again, once, um, once it's coated and it's saturated, uh, the, the bleach will start to slough off. Um, you're gonna have a harder time coating it. So I suggest just dabbing it on and, and getting big blobs on there. Uh, once you try and brush, it's gonna brush all of it off. So just dab it on, you're gonna get it to coat evenly like that, just perfectly like this. The head is at a, an angle, so the bleach may slide off this way. You might try and prop it up with something. Um, I'll see what I've got around. Okay, so it's been about, about roughly two hours. I mean, it's kind of chilly today, so it's not gonna dry as quickly, but here we have the uh, skull is, is good to go. You can tell it's ready to go when the bleach starts falling off. Um, this is a good time. The, uh, the bleach is not going to burn your skin anymore, but this is a good time to maybe wear safety glasses. You don't want this to go in your eyes, but I usually use like a nylon brush. And I'll just come in and, and brush all this off the skull. Um, you can, if you wanted to, uh, go in and rinse all this off. It dissolves really quickly and it, it just liquefies again. I'm just going to brush it off and I'm going to reapply the bleach um, and you'll just go back to the step we did before. Mix it up, paint it back on. Um, usually it gets really close with one coat, um, but with two it should be pure white. Okay, this is, uh, this is what the skull looks like with one bleach. Um, just brushed it off. Uh, you, like I said before, you can rinse it if you'd like, but we just brushed it off. We're going to coat it again. I'll bring it in closer. This is, uh, this is what it looks like. Nice and clean. Um, a lot of times you could get by with just one one coating, uh, but we're gonna do two just to, just to make sure there aren't any dark areas. It does like to be a little bit dark in here, uh, so I'll, I'll make sure to keep that nice and clean. All right, today's the day. Uh, we did the one more coat of the bleach, so that would be two total coats of the bleach, uh, and then let it sit overnight. Uh, right now we've got the, uh, the skull sitting out here. Bleach is ready to come off. You can see it just wants to flake off on its own. Um, 
Last steps are going to be probably wear the gloves when you're doing this. Um, last steps are going to be um, just brush it off one more time. Make sure it's nice and white everywhere. Um, again, try not to get the bleach on the antlers uh, if they're hard horned or if it's velvet, don't get the bleach on the velvet. Um, last step, we're going to brush all this off, try not to breathe it in. Uh, we're going to take it inside, use some hot water, wash off the skull, get, get, the, get the bleach residue off, make sure it's nice and white, and call it good. Okay, we've done the uh, second bleach and washed up the skull. All that, la all that we need to do now is um, I'm going to do one more uh, run with the bleach just to get some of this yellowing out. Uh, there's a little bit of yellowing. This is a thicker part of the skull, and there's probably a little bit more color there. Um, so I'm going to bleach one more time just up in here. Um, I'm also going to soak the skull a little bit, uh, get it softened up, get those plates softened up, and put wire around the nose to pull this seam together, pull that back together, and then let it dry. And the, the last thing is going to be uh, go through and see if there are any loose teeth and run, run a bead of uh, super glue on those teeth just so that they don't rattle around or fall out. Um, that should be about all there is for this process. It's looking pretty good. You guys can do this on your own. It might take like a week. Uh, you just have to get the right material. Um, I'm not great with velvet. The velvet held up pretty well. We treated it, but it's, it's dried out. It was ready to pop, um, ready to rub the velvet off, but it um, looks, looks decent. Um, but yeah, thanks for following along. Uh, make sure to keep your eyes peeled for more Kafaru Cast tech tips, and thanks for watching.